In the heart of 7th century Korean peninsula, amid the relentless push of enemy forces, one ruler dared to defy. King Yongyang of Goguryeo, rallying his nation against the overwhelming forces of Emperor Yang of the Sui dynasty. Leading the Korean defenses was the legendary General Yulji Mundeok, whose ingenious tactics at the Battle of Salsu turned the tide against the invaders. On the opposing side, formidable Chinese generals like Yu Wen Shu and Yu Zhongwen commanded vast armies, yet found themselves outmaneuvered by Goguryeo's resilient warriors. These monumental clashes didn't just shape the course of history, they wove threads into the very genetic fabric of the Korean people. Join us as we uncover how these legacies continue to influence the genetics of modern Koreans today. The Korean Peninsula's unique position at the crossroads of East Asia has made it a melting pot of cultures, languages and peoples throughout history. Bordered by China to the west, Siberia to the north and Japan to the east, Korea has been both a bridge and a barrier for human migrations. The quest to understand the genetic origins of the Korean people is akin to assembling a complex mosaic. Here, each piece representing different migratory waves, cultural exchanges, and historical events that have shaped the nation's demographic landscape. Modern genetic research, combined with archaeological discoveries, has begun to unravel this intricate tapestry. This video delves into pivotal topics, each shedding light on how ancient peoples and influential dynasties have woven together the genetic fabric of Korea. The earliest evidence of human activity on the Korean peninsula dates back to the lower Paleolithic era, over 500,000 years ago. Archaeological sites like Seokjangri in Gongju and Jeonggokri in Yoncheon have yielded stone tools and fossils indicative of early human occupation. Professor Han Changyu of Seoul National University has been instrumental in excavating these sites. At Jonggok-ri, the discovery of Akulian hand axes, a technology primarily associated with Homo erectus, suggests a much earlier human presence than previously thought. Recent advancements in ancient DNA analysis have allowed scientists to extract genetic material from fossilized remains. Studies indicate that these early inhabitants shared mitochondrial haplogroups such as M and N, common among ancient populations. Around 6000 BC, the Korean peninsula underwent a significant transformation with the onset of the Neolithic Revolution. The Chulman culture, characterized by comb-patterned pottery, marks this era of transition to sedentary farming communities. Excavations at Amsadong in Seoul by Dr. Lee Yoon Suk have uncovered pit houses and artifacts indicating a shift from nomadic lifestyles to agriculture and pottery making. Genetic studies on skeletal remains from this period reveal a mixture of local hunter-gatherer genes and those from incoming East Asian farmers. Y-chromosome haplogroup O3, prevalent among East Asian agriculturalists, appears frequently in these remains. Mitochondrial DNA haplogroups such as D4 and G have also been identified, suggesting maternal lineage connections with populations from the Yellow River Basin in China. The introduction of rice cultivation during this period is significant. Archaeobotanist Dr. Kim Jae-hoon's analysis of rice grains at the Sorori site indicates that rice farming began in Korea around 5000 BC. This agricultural advancement likely spurred population growth and further genetic mixing as communities settled and expanded. The Bronze Age, beginning around 1500 BC, brought about substantial cultural and technological changes. The Mumun pottery culture, known for its plain, undecorated pottery, reflects the move towards large-scale agriculture and complex societal structures. Archaeologist Dr. Park Su Kyung's work at the Songguk Ri site has uncovered evidence of bronze production, fortified settlements, and social stratification. Genetically, this period saw an influx of new populations from the northern regions. Y-DNA haplogroup C3, 
associated with nomadic tribes from Siberia and Mongolia, becomes more prominent in remains from this era. This suggests migrations from the Eurasian steppes, introducing new genetic lineages and technologies such as bronze metallurgy and horse domestication. Megalithic structures like dolmens, found extensively in Korea, indicate cultural exchanges with regions as far as northeast China and the Russian Far East. The presence of these structures supports theories of widespread interaction and genetic mixing during the Bronze Age. The Han Dynasty's establishment of the Lelang Commandery in 108 BC near modern-day Pyongyang marked a significant period of Chinese influence. Archaeological research led by Professor Kim Chang-nam has excavated Han-style tombs, artifacts and administrative records, illustrating the integration of Chinese culture and governance. Genetic analysis of remains from Lelang tombs, published in the Journal of East Asian Archaeology, shows Y-chromosome haplogroups common in northern China, such as O2A1C, present among the local population. This genetic infusion suggests intermarriage between Han Chinese settlers and indigenous Koreans. The assimilation policies of the Han administration facilitated cultural and genetic exchanges, introducing Confucianism, Chinese script, and advanced ironworking techniques. The Lelang period also saw the spread of Han-style urban planning and agriculture, significantly impacting the social and economic development of the Korean peninsula. The Three Kingdoms period, 57 BC to 668 AD, was a formative era in Korean history, marked by the rise of Goguryeo, Baekje, and Silla. Goguryeo, located in the northern regions, was influenced by Siberian and Manchurian cultures. Archaeologist Dr. Zhong Yang Mo's studies of Goguryeo tomb murals near Jian, China, depict a warrior society with shamanistic traditions and Buddhist influences. Genetic samples from Goguryeo sites show a higher frequency of haplogroups C3 and N associated with northern nomadic tribes. Baekje in the southwest was renowned for its cultural sophistication and maritime trade. Professor Kang Inuk's research indicates strong connections with Japan's Yamato period. Mitochondrial DNA analysis reveals shared haplogroups between Baekje remains and ancient Japanese samples, suggesting genetic flow due to migration and intermarriage. Baekje played a pivotal role in transmitting Buddhism and Chinese writing to Japan. The extent of Baekje's influence on Japan has been a subject of scholarly debate and nationalistic controversy. Some Japanese historians, such as Professor Tanaka Mitsuhiko of Tokyo University, argue that the Yamato state developed independently, downplaying Korean influences. In contrast, Korean scholars like Dr. Lee Sung Jin emphasize the significant role of Baekje immigrants in shaping early Japanese culture, language, and genetics. Genetic studies have added fuel to this debate. Research published in Nature Communications by geneticist Dr. Satoshi Horai indicates that the Yayoi people, who migrated to Japan around 300 BC, shared genetic markers with populations from the Korean Peninsula and Northeast Asia. This supports the theory that there was considerable migration from Korea to Japan, influencing the genetic makeup of modern Japanese. However, these findings have been met with resistance by some Japanese nationalist groups, who argue that such interpretations undermine Japan's historical narrative of a homogeneous and unique origin. The controversy highlights the complex interplay between genetics, history and national identity in East Asia. Silla, in the southeast, eventually unified the Korean peninsula. Excavations by Dr. Kim Woo-ju at Gyeongju have uncovered royal tombs filled with gold ornaments, reflecting wealth and artistry. Genetic studies indicate increased homogeneity during the unified Silla period, with reduced diversity in Y-DNA haplogroups. This suggests integration policies promoting intermarriage among the populations of the former kingdoms. 
Often overshadowed by the three kingdoms, the Gaia Confederacy, 42 to 562 AD, was a collection of polities in the Nakdong River Basin. Renowned for its advanced iron production, Gaia played a crucial role in regional trade networks. Archaeometallurgist Dr. Lim Sun Hee's work at the Daesongdong tombs in Gimhai has revealed sophisticated iron artifacts, weapons, and horse trappings. Genetic findings from Gaia sites indicate a mix of indigenous Korean and northern lineages. The presence of Y-DNA haplogroups like O1B2 suggests connections with maritime groups from the Japanese archipelago and possibly Southeast Asia. This genetic diversity aligns with historical records of Gaia's extensive trade relations and cultural exchanges. Some Japanese scholars have posited that the Gaia Confederacy was under the influence or even control of ancient Japan, based on interpretations of the Nihon Shoki, an ancient Japanese chronicle. According to Professor Nakamura Kenji of Kyoto University, references to the Mimana Nihon Fu imply a Japanese administrative office in Gaia. This perspective suggests that Japan exerted political influence over parts of the Korean peninsula during this period. Korean historians largely refute this claim, citing a lack of concrete archaeological evidence. Dr. Choi Byung-wook of Korea University argues that the relationship was more likely one of mutual trade and cultural exchange rather than political dominance. Excavations in Gaia have not uncovered artifacts indicative of Japanese governance, and Korean records do not mention such control. The debate over Gaia's relationship with ancient Japan remains a contentious topic, reflecting broader historical tensions between the two nations. After the fall of Goguryeo, the Balhai Kingdom, 698 to 926 AD, emerged in the Northern Territories, encompassing parts of modern-day northeastern China and Russia. Historian Dr. Kim Jin Ho's research highlights Balhae as a multi-ethnic state with populations of former Goguryeo people, Mohe tribes, and other Tungusic groups. Archaeological findings at the Long Quanfu site by Chinese archaeologist Professor Sun Jixian reveal advanced city planning and cultural artifacts blending Chinese, Korean, and indigenous influences. Genetic studies of remains suggest a continuation of haplogroups N and C3, reflecting the kingdom's diverse demographic makeup. Balhae's fall to the Kitan Liao dynasty led to migration southward, contributing to the genetic pool of the Goryeo dynasty and further diversifying the Korean population. The question of Balhae's cultural and historical identity has sparked debate among Korean, Chinese, and Russian scholars. China includes Balhai in its historical narrative as a regional government within its territory, while Korea views Balhai as a successor state to Goguryeo, emphasizing its Korean heritage. This dispute extends to genetic studies, with Chinese researchers like Dr. Li Wei emphasizing the Mohe a Tungusic people, influence in Balhai's population, suggesting a more diverse genetic makeup. Korean scholars argue that while Balhai was multi-ethnic, the ruling class and cultural foundations were predominantly derived from Goguryeo, aligning more closely with Korean ancestry. The 13th century Mongol invasions under Genghis Khan's successors had profound effects on Korea. After prolonged resistance, Goryeo became a vassal state to the Mongol-led Yuan dynasty. Historian Li Ji-hyun documents the political alliances cemented through royal intermarriages, such as King chung yols marriage to a Mongol princess. Genetic evidence from this era indicates an introduction of Y-DNA haplogroup C2 among the Korean aristocracy, common among Mongolian populations. While the genetic impact was limited to the elite, cultural influences permeated society. Mongol military tactics, administrative systems, and even clothing styles were adopted. The use of the Sangsu, a Mongol-style composite bow, 
became prevalent in Korean archery. The Mongol period also saw resistance movements that emphasized Korean identity. The Sambiolcho Rebellion, 1270 to 1273, led by remnants of the Goryeo military regime, opposed Mongol influence. This period of conflict and synthesis contributed to a complex legacy, where Mongol influences were integrated into Korean culture, yet a strong sense of national identity persisted. The Korean Genome Project, led by Professor Lee Jung-ho, has sequenced thousands of genomes, providing comprehensive data on genetic variations and ancestral lineages. Published in Nature Genetics, the study confirms that Koreans share close genetic ties with Northeast Asian populations, including Chinese and Japanese, but also possess unique genetic markers. Despite the scientific advancements, interpretations of genetic data have sometimes stirred controversies. Some Japanese researchers have suggested that genetic similarities indicate a shared origin or significant ancient migration from Japan to Korea. For instance, Dr. Yamada Hiroshi's study claims that certain genetic markers found in Japanese populations predate those in Koreans. Korean scholars challenge these assertions, arguing that the genetic flow was predominantly from the Korean peninsula to Japan, especially during the Yayoi period. They cite archaeological evidence of Korean-style pottery, bronze mirrors, and iron tools in ancient Japanese sites as support. The debate extends into sensitive historical and national identity issues. Accusations of bias and nationalist agendas have occasionally marred academic discourse. The Korean diaspora, spread across China, the United States, Japan, and Central Asia, adds another layer to the genetic narrative. Geneticist Dr. Hong Seong Wook's studies on the Koryo Sarum, ethnic Koreans in the former Soviet Union, reveal genetic continuity despite generations abroad. This research underscores the resilience of genetic heritage amidst cultural assimilation. In China, the Keoxianzu, ethnic Koreans, maintain cultural and genetic ties to the Korean peninsula. Studies conducted by Professor Zhang Li of Jilin University show that while there has been some genetic mixing with Han Chinese, the core genetic markers remain distinctly Korean. The exploration of genetic origins intersects with questions of cultural identity. As Korea becomes increasingly globalized, there is growing interest in ancestral roots. The genetic heritage of the Korean people is a rich tapestry woven from countless threads of migration, conquest, trade, and cultural exchange. From the earliest Paleolithic settlers to the influential periods of the Three Kingdoms, and through the significant impacts of Chinese, Siberian, Mongolian, and Japanese interactions, each era has contributed to the complex genetic landscape we observe today. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.